Further, we're now joined by Owen and Cornwall from Nkunzi Investments. Great to have you with us, Owen. Thank you. So are there local factors at play, or is this just uh, the US dollar, it, it's their story, they're getting stronger, so we get relatively weaker? Look, I think the local story has been digested already. It's priced in, in our view. Um, you know, we've got ESCOM. We know what's happening with ESCOM. Can't supply the country with enough energy, uh, unemployment, poor GDP growth. It's all in the numbers. But this last move here that you're seeing in these currencies, especially in the emerging markets, uh, as well as some developed markets, uh, you know, the pound, the euro, and all the other Asian currencies against the US dollar. It's all about dollar strength, which started sometime last week when the US uh, uh, unemployment numbers improved significantly. You know, the guys created 300,000 jobs in the previous month, and from then on, people just started believing that the, the US government is gonna start pulling back on easy money into the system, which will result in, let's see, interest rates go up in the US. Um, and the important thing about that fact is that if interest rates are going up in the USA, elsewhere in the Eurozone, just last week we saw uh, Mario Draghi start his quantitative easing program. Uh, I think it's version 5.8 or whatever it is. There's just so much more cheaper money that's going to be put into um, you know, these developed markets in Europe and any other economy outside the US because they seem to be struggling uh, instead of uh, catching up with the US. So I believe that most of these factors are exogenous. Why, however, after a few days, uh, you spoke about pricing in the local factors. Why isn't the U.S. factor already priced in the, the, the fact that they look likely to raise interest rates? Why is the rand still so volatile? It's not just the rand. It's the rest of the emerging markets currencies. Remember, the, the reason the rand is, a, is a, the most affected here, if you take a small gauge, the, the rand is the most liquid of all uh, emerging markets currencies. So whenever there's a need to sell emerging market themes, the guys start selling the rent. Mm -hmm. So that's why this has happened. Uh, so priced in uh, an increase in interest rates in the US, some people say it has been priced in. But you know what our concern is about that? We think that once the US starts increasing interest rates, it most likely is going to slow down this recovery we are seeing in the USA. We do believe they are most likely going to wait for, for the Eurozone to digest their own quantitative uh, easing programs. Mm. We doubt that June is going to see an interest rate increase in the in the US, most probably later on in the year when we start to see the second round effects of uh, the reduction of interest rates in uh, in the Eurozone. So where's the, the bottom for, for the rand? Where is the bottom? Because we're still seeing it <laughs> very volatile. And that is a very difficult question um, and I think that it's going to remain so as long as the US is producing very good numbers economically uh, that is showing that the US economy is recovering. Um, and if that is the case, people are going to start continuously, or rather they're going to continue to bet that at some point there'll be an increase in the interest rates in the USA. And I believe for us, if uh, that is the theme, the rent may continue to weaken a little bit more. So, so just explain it. So the US becomes more attractive because the yeah. interest rates are better. Our interest rates are actually much better, yes. um, but, but it's all relative because you've got um, a safer investment in, in America. That's the way it's seen. Do you agree with Chris Hart, who says that we should start to distinguish ourselves um, as, as a safe destination, not one of these risky emerging market currencies. And how do we do that? Look, it doesn't matter how we, how we paint ourselves out there. The bottom line is the numbers don't lie. That's what we say in the financial and we're in markets. Trouble. We can go out there and market ourselves all we want, but if our GDP is not uh, rising, if uh, there's still a whole lot of challenges in terms of raising capital for ESCOM, for example, with a weakening currency, it means if we go to the international markets to look for money to help ESCOM, we're going to be paying more in interest rates. So I really think that uh, it's, it's sometimes it's very difficult being being in, being South Africa because you um, judge based on uh, on, a, on, a, on a holistic emerging markets basket, even if the dynamics may necessarily be different. You mm. just said that the ratings agencies say for the next 12 months, they don't think they're going to uh, downgrade South Africa as, uh, as an economy. So it's, 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 a tough, it's a tough position to be in because on the one hand, we're taking exogenous factors. We just benefited from a weaker oil price, but now it's all going to be wiped out mm. by, the, by the weakening currency. We're, we're on a bit of a roller coaster. Most definitely. Right. So, so a weaker rand means inflation usually because we're an economy that imports a, a lot of things so they become relatively more expensive and does that mean uh, at one stage we were talking about interest rate cuts are we now going to see an interest rate hike here in South Africa and when? You know it's, it's a tough one yet again it's a matter of balancing issues out how can we increase interest rates 
when the economy is not growing, when millions of people are jobless mm -hmm. out there. Uh, I think Mr. Kanyako is really in a tight spot, as much as the minister Nene was in a tight spot three weeks ago. Um, how are we going to increase interest rates when, when we're not achieving uh, decent economic growth? But at the same time, to, to deal with the inflation question and so forth, we know that the Reserve Bank has got a 3% to 6% band that they are, man they are monitoring in terms of inflation. So if inflation does tick up and it goes above uh, 6 or percent, what I anticipate to happen is that the, the, the sub will increase interest rates mm. so that in some ways the currency gets back some of its strength. And once that happens, the inflationary pressures are going to start to subside, hopefully. But I'm, I'm thinking that we're most likely not going to see an interest rate hike for the next two quarters, in my view. We could be wrong. That would be a relief for, for consumers. For consumers, most definitely. Because we do have it easy right now in, in terms of interest rates. Let's look at the global picture. Yes. Because there is this paradox that China owns a lot of U.S. dollars. Mm. Um, the U.S. dollar has also increased against the yen. So just explain how this, uh, what implications it has for the global economic balance that, that's been around for a while. Well, for China, for example, if you're China, you're, you're very happy to see your currency weaken against the U.S. dollar. Uh, they used to have an aggressive peg, or rather a more concerted peg, which meant that the Chinese one wouldn't move against the peg when compared to the US dollar. They allowed it to, to, to fluctuate a bit. So any weakness in the yuan is very good for uh, Chinese exports into the rest of the world, especially exports going to the USA. Uh, and at the same time, it's good to know that you're holding all of these, these foreign reserves denominated in dollar terms and that currency is actually firming up. It is very good for, for China, I believe. Uh, it's going to help their, their, their balance, of, uh, the balance of payments down the line, most very, definitely. Very quickly, because we've run out of time. Yeah. Is there anything good in, in this uh, a, a weak rand? We're not seeing our miners benefit. Anything that we could uh, be happy about right now? Geez, the only people who can benefit are exporters uh, who produce from South Africa. If you're producing locally and you're exporting, then and happy they days. don't always even benefit. Exactly. Otherwise, it's a very tough, uh, we're in a very tough condition. All right. Thank yeah. you so much for your analysis. Owen and Como from Nkunzi Investments.